think we I think we've got a good chance if we really, you know, stick to the game plan. It's in your space, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, you. Your loyalty to the players, how, how has that contributed to the success? Yeah, no, no, you're absolutely correct. The, the loyalty's been a big factor, I think, this year. Really sticking with the players. They know where they stand. I know where I stand with them. And that's really been a foundation for what we've... S sorry, I've got... This is... Assistant. Uh, hi, mate. In the, in the in a press conference, make, make it quick. Sorry, dude, that's actually... Francis injury. Sorry, how, how bad is it? In the wrong direction. For four months. We've got the clause right in that contract. They'll probably get 20 years for this. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. We put it in there for a reason. We knew this could happen with his knee. No, that's fine, mate. Right, I, I've got to go. Yeah, yeah, press conference, you know, ahead of the big playoff. I'll catch you in a bit. So, um, yeah, as I, as, as I was saying, uh, loyalty really important at this team, especially when players get injured. We like to stick by them. How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number six of Park 2. Primera today, the end of season number one. We're here already. It's the playoffs. There are two stages to this. We're playing both of them today. It's about to get very serious. You can see here that we won our promotion stage group and alongside Bilbao Athletic and Real Union, we have now progressed to the playoffs where there is only a first and a second round. Four teams will get promoted via this. The way it's set up, Two stages, single leg affairs, and you can see we have been drawn against Recreativo. Could have been easier, could have been worse. Uh, they ended up finishing third on 41 points. By comparison, we had something like 60. Of course, completely different division. Not sure what kind of conclusions we can draw from it. As you saw by the intro, a little bit of sad news, Francis. We hardly knew ye. Released after about four months at the club. We knew when we signed him he had a history with injuries. We knew there was a risk that his knee would go bang at any moment. It went bang. We had the injury release clause. We enacted it. We saved some pennies. And off the back of this injury, his physicals are kind of in the bin, which isn't really what I want from my fullback. So a little bit sad. We knew it could happen. Uh, we are without him today. So now that we've talked about the negative news here at the club, let's talk about some positives. First and foremost, the board, lovely Alfredo Perez as our chairman, they've injected some money into the club. £725,000 to help out with the running costs. I believe that's actually the second time they've injected that kind of money into the club since we've had our debt issues. Of course, we've got that big debt to pay off. The overall balance still isn't looking that pretty. Next season's wage budget is lower than this year's wage budget. It, it would be fair to say that it's not a problem that we're over, but it's nice to see the board trying to help out just a little bit. Now, of course, last episode, I left things on a little bit of a cliffhanger. We had a youth intake on its way. It's here. It's happened. It was pretty good as well, which makes me very, very giddy. Of course, these players who are rated kind of five star, that is five star relative to the current squad. I'd like to believe a few of these might go on to play for us in the longer term future. You can see the players here highlighted are the players who have joined us. And I think for me, uh, Lopez is the pick of the bunch. I like this guy a lot. 15 years old, really, really well-rounded. I hate the fact he's unambitious. I hate the fact he's inconsistent. But he does look really, really good. So, yeah, keep a close eye on him. He is the kind of player who could end up playing in the first team at points next year. And while there are a couple of other players to be aware of, Martinez is a bit of a weird one. He's very, very quick, but he has the physicals of an ant when it comes to kind of jumping ability and strength. I can already hear the comment section. Jack, ants are actually really strong. I'm aware he's a human with the strength of an ant. He can lift a leaf. Besides his physicals, though, which are kind of quite contrasting, the mentals may be lacking just a little. The mentals are lacking quite a lot. I was going to say a little bit. They're completely absent, but he's a right winger. He's quick. He has a good first touch. He can pass. He's got technique. He's got flair. We'll keep an eye on him. Lots of potential. Hopefully, he can grow a brain. The third and final of our particularly hot prospects from this intake is David Gurria. He's 16 years old. When I first looked at this polygon, I thought, centre-back. He's not a centre. He's a centre mid with 17 flair. Bit of a weird player. I wasn't exactly sure how to train him. In the end, I elected to go with ball winner midfielder. He's the kind of player who I could end up training at centre-back. Maybe. Uh, I mean, at 16 years old, loads of room for him to kind of shape himself going forward. I think one thing is for certain, he's never going to be a particularly great attacking midfielder. His dribbling's lacking. His finishing doesn't exist. He's off the ball and, well, 
other aspects of his game that he'd kind of need going forward. They're not there. But in terms of as a defensive prospect, I like the look of David. He could definitely feature in the first team at some point down the line. So anyway, that is a little bit of an overview of the intake, although there are a fair few other players here who could end up being okay. We'll keep tabs on them. If any of them emerge and blossom into beautiful flowers, I'll let you know all about them. In terms of our prep for the end of the season, it's been a bit weird going into the playoffs. You can see, obviously, we've played four games since we last year. We won them all very convincingly. I think the big standout one was the 5-2 win. One thing that you may notice here is Foster gets a lot of goals. Foster has been in really good form since he's come back from his injury. Of course, he got a couple in the game last episode. Since then, nine goals and six assists this season in nine starts and three appearances off the bench. Those are some really impressive returns. The goals have been flowing, but, and I don't know who scheduled this, the Spanish authorities need to give their heads a wobble and sort it out. We've played one game in the last month going into this playoff run. Not ideal. As a result, I arranged a load of friendlies to keep fitness high. How did that go, you might ask? Uh, well, how about every single one of our left attacking midfielders got injured? Yeah, appreciate it, football manager. As you can see here, Bustos is out, of course. Yardi, as I've now been told it is, uh, also was injured last episode. Cedric, he got injured in training. Uh, it's, it's been great. As a result of all of that, our only left attacking midfit today is our left back, who can just so happened to play left attacking mid in Pablo Andrade. So a little bit weak on the left. Elsewhere in the team, though, we go into things pretty good. I will say that as a result of the friendlies and stuff, there's a distinct lack of match sharpness outside of the starting eleven. Might have forgotten to rotate the team with all the friendlies that we had. So going into hopefully what will be the first of two games today, here is the team. Recreativo play a 4-3-3 normally, so I'm kind of anticipating that. I want to match up to them. I want Torre to be causing their defence in mid a load of issues. Of course, changes have had to happen with the team, with Francis out injured and then being released. It has meant that Lars Gerson has come back into the side, of course. His contract expires at the end of the year. He's not left us yet. He might still be here next year. Who knows? But, well, we're calling upon a bit of experience in him. Obviously, Andrade out on the left wing, the other player who's a bit of a change-up. I feel like the rest of this team looks as you would expect. Foster up top has kind of stolen Capani's spot as the striker in the team, although both are very, very capable goal scorers and assisters at this level. It's kind of nice to have a player in Capane on the bench. But anyway, let's get into this game. As I said, hopefully we win this one and we get to go into a second match against a mystery opposition. You're probably now, if you're curious, looking at the length of the video, trying to figure it out. Don't do that. Don't. I, I will just pointlessly make the end of this video really long if we lose this game, just to kind of bamboozle you all. I mean, hopefully it's not going to come to that. Hopefully we're going to get a good result. I was hoping for a slightly better response from this team talk, though. No, no one cares. Okay, all of our season leads to this. Of course, the Spanish kind of current third tier as of this season is absolutely huge in game. Hence the fact we have these playoffs at the end for just four promotion spots. There is a big restructuring going on. If we make it through the two games today, we're into the second division. If we lose, we do still go into what I think is a slightly more condensed third division. We've got a chance early on here, though. Pablo whipping it in. Gibua's there, and while well, it dropped, and I'm not sure who it dropped to, but the effort on goal was a little bit tame. Not a great start, but at least we're showing some signs of intent. And well, we've got the ball again here. Gerson to Pablo. Gerson reclaiming the number two shirt at right back. Whips it goalwards. Nazet collects. So far, bit of a cagey opening. We've been the better team, but look, we, this is the kind of game where we have to get the goals. We have to do the results on the day. There's been times where we've not performed to expectations and we've got away with it. That's not something that's going to happen in today's episode as Lopez takes it down well at left back, skips past one man, whips it into Foster, who beats the keeper at the near post for his 10th league goal of the season. You know what? I'm a little bit gutted that he was injured like he was with his shoulder injury, but since he's come back, since we've shown the faith in him, he's kind of just elevated his game to a whole new level. Lopez, very, very nice work down the far side of the pitch there. He whipped it goalwards. Foster tucks it away. Half an hour gone. 1-0. And we're straight into another highlight. Gerson. What can you do for us? Cejudo to Ricky at the edge of the box. Hits it over. So at the break here, it's not really been a classic. They're yet to have a shot on target or 
a shot at all, actually. Zero, zero. I mean, if we don't let them shoot, then they can't score and we'll go through. But I feel like we do need to get a second goal just to help ease my nerves a little bit. The wingbacks able to find a fair bit of space forward here as we have a chance to Hudo, to Ricky, to Gerson. I mean, it's beautiful football. Is there an end product at the end of it all, though? Gerson into Cejudo and the 37-year-old there. You would have thought in kind of 25 years of professional football, he would have learned to keep the ball down. He hits it over. We do have another chance, though. Let's, let's not write ourselves off yet. As Well, Foster heads it at the keeper. It was another ball, actually, in by Gerson at right back. Glass is looking very good. He's looking like an international player all of a sudden. Andrade switches it over to Cejudo. Don't hit this one over. He tries to get the ball in. It falls to Foster. Falls to Ricky. Pablo shot blocked. Falls to Foster again. Chance after chance after chance. Lots of sustained possession in this game. Holding the ball up well. The centre-back's carrying it forward. Lopez on the overlap. Can he get a ball of quality into the box? He's already got one. He's not going to need to get another. Andrade is on the penalty. Nine finishing, but 14 penalty taking. You know what? Oh, do I bring in Cejudo? Or do I bring in... F you know what? Foster's already scored one. I'm showing faith in the South African youngster. He's on fire. He's had a good game. He's the man I want to step up. Lyle, do it for us. Get us a... He's missed it. He's missed it. I mean, did he hit... Did the keeper save that or did that hit the post? Oh, no, not like this, football manager. This is just a long, long highlight. They're going to lump it clear. They've not even left kind of a man forward. Their striker must be on some kind of supportive role. He's dropping so deep. So Hudo, out to Gerson. Can we, you know, shrug off that penalty quickly and get a goal? Gerson, Ricky, Sahudo. I mean, could there be another penalty? It falls to Pablo. His shot's blocked. We've had so many highlights here. How is this one nil? So they're yet to have a shot on target, but I am a bit worried about these bookings. So you know what? We're going to take off Yabua and bring in Yanigo. Going to hope that Ricky can stay well behaved. Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ease off tackles. 20 minutes left in this game. It's still one nil and we've been in complete control, but I just have that nervous feeling they could have one chance. They've got a corner. Ricky's headed off the line. He's headed it off the line. I'm fine. Remain calm, everyone. Gerson to Pablo. Ball whipped in. Andrade. Oh, my word. What a header that was by the defender. I'm not sure about that football manager. That was insane defending. Two minutes left. You know what? We'll just do a shout at a man more and the game's going to fizzle out. I mean, we've won it 1-0 with an XG of 3.58. Gerson's got man of the match. He's desperately fighting for a new contract. But the big headline here is we've navigated one of the two games. We are one game away from a promotion. I'm just now nervous about who we could be taking on. I'm just mashing continue here. There's just a question mark over the opposition. Who are we going to play? Okay, it's actually done as a draw. This is exciting, isn't it? A who is here? So Valencia's B team, Numancia, who I think are a pretty big team, Barcelona B, Marbella, Deportivo, Burgos. Now, I believe in real life, Burgos is the team that knocked out Racing in the playoffs. So I, I wouldn't mind getting them to try and get some revenge. Let's turn on the automatic draw. I really don't want Deportivo or Barcelona B. We're not going to get Burgos. I mean, Deportivo are lurking still. Marbella, they've got Deportivo. I mean, not Valencia is probably what I'd want here. We've got Numancia, who... Did we play them at some point this year? Maybe even in a friend. Did we play a friendly against you guys? We did. We won it 3-1 there. Uh, they finished top of their group, which is actually the same group that Deportivo and Burgos were in. Should I be scared? I'm nervous. So what feels like a very short first season boils down to this. Of course, this is the pandemic-affected format in Spain. We started our season not all that long ago. 26 league games later, one playoff game later... We find ourselves here. Winner takes all. Numancia, of course, relegated with us last season from the Segunda Division. Quatan is their key man. He is a very, very good little playmaker. And as we already established, this is a squad that finished ahead of Deportivo in the league. And a Deportivo team 
with a lot of money at their disposal. So I'm expecting a pretty tough match here. This is not going to be a walk in the park. Of course, very unfortunate as well to be drawn away from home. A fixture where both teams won their respective groups. So whoever loses here is going to feel pretty unfortunate. Little bit of news for us. Andrade, he bruised his ankle which is obviously not ideal. Bustos, you can see here, he can play 45 minutes on the wing. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to bring in Bustos. I think Bustos is going to have to start and then potentially Andrade is going to have to come in. Of course, with this being the last game of the season, we can kind of do what we want when it comes to forcing players to play a little bit too long. Bustos... He's been a good little left winger this year when we've called upon him, although we've not called upon him all that often. He's going to get a rare start today on a big stage. Maybe he can show me that it was a mistake not to play him earlier on this year. The rest of the squad, it's the team that you all know and love. Sehudo, his final game as a professional footballer, aged 37 is here and now. Hopefully we can have him end on a high. Hopefully we can end our season on a high with promotion. I'm anticipating them to play some kind of five at the back formation, possibly be looking to catch us out on the break. Of course, we are going to be hoping that with our technical ability on the ball, we're able to hold on to possession and just bully them relentlessly over time. Benito up top for them, the man we need to be aware of, their top goal scorer. We come into this game off the back of five straight wins. I really, really hope we get promoted here. I feel like we deserve to get promoted and without trying to, you know, sound too entitled, it'd be pretty devastating if we didn't make it up this year. Anyway, there's going to be an early highlight here. I'm expecting a much tougher game than that previous fixture. And while they have the ball here with Tamayo, now with Kotan, who's their key man, although Pablo battling away the two playmakers for either team, trying to wrestle possession off uh, one another. Unfortunately, they have come away with it. And now it's with Andres GM. There's five at the back there playing. It looks like the wing-backs are going to get high up the pitches. Asia is threaded through, and that is not the start we needed. Two minutes gone. Asia scores for them. That was too simple. Way too simple. They held on to the ball quite nicely here, knocked it around well, and then this ball through here, this little dink, it was Oscar Heel with it. He's been so good for us this year, Oscar, and he just didn't track his man when it mattered. Asia gives them a lead inside the first three minutes. I already feel like we've been on the back foot more in this game than we have been against any other team in our division and at this level that we've been playing at this year. Anyway, ball played wide. Bustos out on the left wing. He's got a point to prove. Asia through. Surely he's offside. Crespo saves it. It wouldn't have been offside. Matic, very, very lazy at centre-back. I think he must have been playing the man on there. I'm going to shout to Manmore. We're not having nearly enough of the ball, which is kind of what our brand of football is all about. I think I've got to maybe look to change things up after this highlight. But let's let this highlight play out first. Maybe to Manmore was all we needed. Foster's through. His effort goes wide of the post, though. You know what? I'm going to wait until half time before I make any changes. I hope I'm not going to live to regret that. But what we've seen in this half is nothing short of disappointing. Absolutely nothing to sing and dance or cheer about there. We're 1-0 down and we need to change something up. Now, in terms of what we can change up here, I mean, Gabua on a booking just scares me right away. So I'm going to bring in Inigo. I think in terms of how we approach this, we're going to go a little bit more direct. Let's look to not play it through the middle and out through the back. Of course, they've got three centre mid, so they're going to be very, very proficient in that regard. I would like us to look for the overlap a little bit more, just because I think we can double up on their wing backs. Of course, they're not going to have the wide attacking midfielders to help them out. Equally, our full backs should have a fair bit of space to operate in. And in terms of out of possession, you know what? We're going to start to press just a little bit more, slightly higher line of engagement, I think, as well than what we were doing in the first half. Bustos would be the man maybe I'd look to take off on a 6.3, but obviously I can't really do that right now. What I would say is he's probably not the most natural of inside forwards. So you know what? For this second half, I'm going to change him to a winger. I think that is a role that suits him better. Perhaps doesn't fit our system quite as well, but... It's kind of one of those situations where we've got to find some balance. Anyway, we're going to get into the second half here. Those changes made. The shape remains the same. The roles are going to be changed up. Who knows? Maybe an ego can, you know, really make an impact for us at centre mid coming in for Gibua. So Hudo had a very quiet game so far, the 37-year-old. Ball whipped into Foster, whose header just goes over the bar. 
It's not a bad thing to see inside the first two and a half minutes. We've created an opportunity. This is a horrible game. This is a game where we are just not looking particularly good. I would say we are having slightly more of the ball than we were having. I'm going to go on attacking here. You know what? With 20 minutes left, with 20 minutes left, I'm going to make changes. Pablo Torre has been really poor today, and I'm going to bring in Capani to play as a pressing forward. I think on attack. So Hudo, you're going to have to go into a more traditional winger role here, I think, mate. He's not really got the legs for that, but we're going to stick on a second striker. And now Lopez has got injured and Andrade, who I didn't really want to play today. He's got to come in at left back. 20 minutes left. We need a goal. And of course, in playing more attacking now, we are going to leave ourselves exposed at the back as Tamayo heads it into the hands of Ives and Crespo. The captain who, well, of course, his contract expires at the end of the year. He's had a good performance in goal. And while Capani could latch onto this, Foster hits it, finds the back of the net. The change works instantly. Maybe Foster just needed a friend up front. 15 minutes left in this game. We draw equal. And, uh, well, it could be going to extra time as things stand. Lilo gives the ball away. It falls to Foster. He tucks it into the bottom corner. You know what? Cejudo's not a great game. I'm going to bring in Traver out on the right. He's not been great this year, but he is the best option I've got in the wide areas. We've had so many injuries to wide players like Cedric, who's just been essential to how we play, that players who I wasn't really ever wanting to rely on, we're having to call upon them now. Three minutes left. We have scored one of only two shots we've had on target in this game. This game looks destined to go to extra time, but it's the 93rd minute and there is a highlight. Is it going to be jubilation or heartbreak for one of these teams? It's through to Del Campo. Campo. Tamayo now playing out on the right. They've switched to a 3-5-2. Ball whipped in Catan. Tries to get his header away. It's cleared away. Asia's there, though. It's not in. Did the keeper save that? I think the keeper's just pulled off an absolutely unreal save. And we are going to extra time. I mean, it's going to be a longer episode, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a longer episode. I am not happy, lads. I've got faith in them to make things happen. We've looked better since we've changed things up, but on the balance of play, we are fortunate to still be in this fixture at this moment in time. 20 minutes left. To be fair, I think I'd be grateful if we make it to penalties at the moment. We have not been good enough here. Ball played forward. Asia's through, and he tucks it into the bottom corner. I did wonder when they switched back to the... The 5-3-2 formation that they started with. I noticed they changed back to that in extra time. Maybe that would cause us issues. It's taken 15 minutes into extra time for us to get a highlight. It's not the kind of highlight we wanted to see. Asia threaded through. Good finish by him, to be fair. We've got 15 minutes left in this game to try and turn things around. I've got to change things. I've got to change things. Bustos, he's on a 5.9. Like, can I make another change? No. He's on a five. How do you get a 5.9? I think at this point, it's just a case of slide everything to the right. It's like we're doing the cha-cha slide. We're staying attacking rather than very attacking, but 10 minutes left. Time to throw some bodies forward. Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Is this a highlight? Oscar's getting bucked. Is this a highlight? It could be. I mean, this could be the dagger in the heart. It could be the dagger in the heart. It goes flying wide. I mean, how much more attacking can I go here? I suppose Ricky. Ricky, you are free to do what you want here. Inigo, just hold the fort in the middle. Capani, go as attacking as you can, lads. I am throwing absolutely everyone forward. There is four minutes. Is there even going to be a highlight? Please, football manager. Something. Nothing. We crash out. I have to question how much losing all three left attacking mids has hurt us in that game. <sighs> We just didn't turn up. We just didn't turn up. They were way better than us. That is the first time, really, this league season where I've had the full strength team that we have been beaten. They're a fantastic team. What that means is we're not going to go into the second division. We are going to go into the new third division. I've also spotted here the Marbella winners higher seeds against Deportivo. So Deportivo are probably going to be in our division next year. I guess that means there also wouldn't have been penalties, which is just a terrifying thought. We're promoted to La Liga 2. I don't think we are. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that is a bug. <laughs> I mean, that could be a mystery in itself. It says that we've been promoted. I don't think we have football manager. 
I think you're lying to me with this mental format. I mean, we have money to spend next year. I need to know where we're going to be. That feels more important than anything else. Bustos thinks I was too harsh in the team talk. Mate, get in the bin. Get Crespo. Sort this out. Get him in the bin. I'm not talking to him. <sighs> okay, look, I, I think that this item is a, a, is a lot. We're not getting promoted to La Liga 2. I'm 99.9% .9 sure, unless there's been a misunderstanding. I'm going to mash continue and find out. So I can confirm that despite what the game says, uh, we're not in the second division. We're, we're not being promoted. It's not happening. In fact, when I looked at the news inbox items, you can see here Deportivo have apparently won promotion. Uh, apparently Nemancia Burgos have won promotion. Extra Dumas won promotion. Look, no, not, not everyone can get promotion, Football Manager. I'm aware of that. I think the rest of the teams are aware of it. Lying to us doesn't solve it. So yes, ultimately next year, we're going to be going into the new third division, which is actually two separate leagues. I'll show you the league that we're going to be in in front of you now so you can see what's going on. There are two automatic promotion spots. It looks like it's going to be a really competitive league with some really, really good teams in it, uh, which is going to make next season very, very tricky. I've already got an eye on the likes of Deportivo thinking, kind of wish you weren't here in the league with us. So... It's a little bit of a shame, um, but what it does mean is we're going to be here for even longer, struggling for even longer. One thing that I'm not a fan of, just looking at the club expectation and vision, which, again, it mentions La Liga 2, we're not in La Liga 2, is that they want me to sell players before buying. That's not something I've ever seen before as a kind of vision thing to achieve. Apparently, we need to sell players before making any costly additions to the squad. I think the whole idea that we might be able to sign any costly additions is a little a bit ambitious in itself. For whatever reason, we don't get one of those fancy screen bits in this league. So there's no, we can't afford the end of season ceremony. We just get it as an inbox item. You can see here, Matic actually ended up getting fans player of the season at centre-back. Five goals to his name. Um, not a bad little return. He's been very good at centre-back. He is certainly a player alongside Hill in the centre-back position whom I feel pretty confident about kind of keeping faith in and being reliant on going into next year. Elsewhere, Pablo Torre picked up young player of the season. He was also second place in the player of the season voting. Still only eight stamina, but he has improved a fair bit. Maybe a little bit ominous. Benfica are interested. So, um... Hopefully the board don't sell him behind my back. Anyway, that is going to wrap up season number one here at Racing. Not, not the end of the season we wanted. A defeat after extra time. Confusion about the divisions. We are in a new league. We're not promoted. It will feel like we're promoted, though, playing in the new third division. It'll be something slightly different. I hope you guys are excited for it. It's going to be a really, really tough summer transfer window. In terms of when we'll next be back, it may not be tomorrow. It just depends on how preseason goes. I may do some kind of summer transfer update kind of video midway through the summer transfer window, if that's something you would be interested in. Let me know down in the comments. Other than that, if you've got any words of wisdom, encouragement, or just general support. They'd be appreciated. Leave them in the comments. We'll be back again very soon. Season number two. Hopefully it's going to go better than this one's ended. And I'll see you guys then. It is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.